I'm very associated with this DIY happy thing, and one background of this is also a kind of anti-capitalistic statement. So you don't use high definition pro uh, objects or programs or uh, material to perform and to try to build it for yourself. And it's also a kind of action of self-empowerment that you're not forced to spend money into something uh, you, you need to perform and you don't uh, support a big company with it. So you're not forced to support Apple, you're not forced to support Sony. You try to make it by yourself, you get back kind of your right to do music. And in our world, I, I mean, we're living in a kind of increasing hypercapitalism where the value of things and also the quality of things is very often associated with the value of the material you use. And this is for me kind of the anti-statement that I use cans, that I use trash, that I use stuff that is worth maybe 10 euro, 20 euro, 15 euro. For me to build my instrument and also to show, hey, it's possible, you don't need the newest amplifier and the best uh, generator and the newest beat machine and the whatever. Just be creative with your world and try to empower yourself, be smart and not uh, kind of victim of, uh, of media strategies or of uh, advertisement strategies. Mm. That's the reason why I play with trash. When I work with soundscapes, that your eyes get, uh, not your eyes, your ears get big, like you, you start to be really much more focused on what's around, if you have this layer of artificial amplification in between, um, because you, abs you kind of abstract it a little bit, a little bit distant to you, um, and through that you get very much aware of it, so that's why I decided to work on with these existing soundscapes, the title of the piece is the traces of the present unpresent or the unpresent present. And it mainly deals with moods, uh, interaction with something. So I will build a kind of uh, interface that changes the mood of a situation in a very, very subtle way. So I will combine uh, soundscapes, like the existing soundscapes of the room, like a kind of time shift, soundscapes that were in the short past in this room. I will combine that with some slightly musical interventions that change your perceivance of the situation, your interpretation of the situation. I think the most, the biggest influence on my work is actually the work of friends, the people I'm surrounded by. Like I told before, this good org network, all my friends, Bisan Hoik, Didi Butch, are doing really pop music, but have very interesting texts. And that's also kind of music I appreciate a lot. And uh, this this comes back to my music and how I do it. So it's an inspiration one to each other together. Um, and I also I mean I, I, I also have some kind of song pro writing project where I work more with text. Yeah. I mean I don't do that so much as I don't want to be a kind of pop star. So but I also like to play songs and sing and just do it. <laughs> Schnitzler, in German the Seele is ein weites Land, that means the soul is a wide landscape and it's coming out of a context where it's a lot about, um, yeah, it's, it's the allegory of soul and landscape and that, 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 that there's a lot of differences to see on the way and that it's a very wide thing and that it's not like a restricted area and there's a lot of possibility in this landscape. And when I personally listen to music or compose music, I have some really very often some kind of visual expression of, of moving through landscape. Beginning painting, regular painting uh, at the Arts Academy of Vienna, within the class of uh, Franz K. But during this time, I was also engaged in a cultural association in the countryside, which was more a social political project and I spent really a lot of time there and this was also a big influence for me because I was surrounded by a lot of music and a lot of musicians and I organized music festivals myself. Uh, so at this time maybe I got more influence from this cultural center than I actually got from the studies 
But later I came back to Academy to work more there and I started in the video and video installation class of Donald Markhalter. And this was actually a really inspiring time for me, although I was, it was quite short because I was quite close to finish my exams. And I did my final thesis work uh, on the aspect of changing the, the role of video and audio in video. So I already started to make actually the sound work which was commanded by video and it was about the process entering a room so it was an architectural analysis of sound or the other around the sound mm. analysis of architecture <laughs> and that's how that was the point where I really switched to sound and why I started to be really interested on the topic of sound itself not as music but as sound as pure information the topics define the medium that doesn't mean that sound works are not contextualized, but uh, actually sound gets, it's, it's this maybe this point of information. Sound is another layer of information that, that's, that's, that's giving a more subtle and more uh, uh, associative kind of information, mm -hmm. unless you work really with interviews and with speech. So for me, sound is like the, the, the medium for another field of my artwork. And video is, is also for defining other objects. In my generation, there are actually now many musicians who start to play on the ground. And, so, um, and I was also already thinking about that. Uh, I think there are several reasons for that in general. Then I think one is the hierarchic composition that people tend to get back from this uh, uh, musician as a kind of leader figure who goes down a bit. Um, then it's very important the grounding in both senses. We're all working with electronic music, and it's the ground. If you if you play barefoot, you're grounded. That means you avoid a little bit of the harm who can who can appear. And this grounding, when it's also in a metaphorical sense. It's this coming back on earth, you're playing with a very abstract, you, you're you moving yourself in a very abstract way of um, electronic amplification and not in my case, but in other cases, digital generated music and you ground yourself. You keep the connection to the earth. And for me, why I play like that is that I can only play like that. Like, I mean, I also play piano and I figured out when I was when I was playing, I always had this kind of whole body moving. I mean, when I was a child, the teachers always told me, you, you have to sit, you cannot play like that. And, and, st and that's why I finally quit, because I, <laughs> I have yeah. to move my body. It's like, I, I cannot do that. It's for me very important. I don't know, I can't explain it. And when I started to build up my set, it was very intuitive. So I knew that I, I through changing my body weight, I will change the sounds through using a light sensor with my hand. Uh, it's the movement, uh, it's for me the exact uh, the sound that generates reflects the movement. So I build the instruments in the way where I think okay, this movement for me is, is kind of the, the equivalent to the sound it generates.